everybody, it's Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature event, checking in 360X full circle. Early on this event, one of the most dominant teams we've seen here at the Minnesota Signature event, but a really cool robot, uh, you know, backpack, backpack, right? But I mean, this robot is absolutely really, really cool. Hopefully you saw the reveal video. If not, make sure you check that out as well too. But we're gonna be going through so many great attributes of this. I mean, obviously extremely well built as you go through quick scoring capabilities on the mobile goal. So really excited to hear about that. But some strategy changes as they're coming into this event that we talked about as well too. Some great things in terms of uh, automation we'll be covering. So I can't wait to learn more about this robot coming up here on Picks and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Tyler, we got to talk about the uh, backpack, one of the big stars of your robot here. So talk to me about, you know, what it is, how it's being utilized. And then when we were talking earlier, you guys are using like a locking claw as well, too. Yeah, so uh, I'd say that the backpack on this robot, um, which for those of you that don't know what backpack is, it's basically just a mechanism that's able to de-score uh, our own rings off the mobile gold so that we can uh, put them on the high stake. So it allows us to, instead of scoring one or two at a time, we're actually able to score four at a time and in a future iteration, possibly six at a time if we continue in this route of uh, design. Um, but yeah, so what makes that's sort of what makes this robot special and stand out uh, compared to some of the others. Uh, the robot just turned off. I'll let you turn that on. Um, so a few mechanical things about it. Uh, it's just a uh, two bar that swings over the top. Um, yeah, my teammate Heitner is going to yeah. show that. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a uh, two bar arm that swings over the top uh, with a little angled sort of uh, claw at the very front. Uh, and that's something that we can fold in to stay in size. Um, and so so we can load directly into the claw. Yeah, so when we swing that over, it just allows us to score them here. So what we do is we press a macro, uh, this button right here, this button right, uh, and that brings the arm, here, you want to tell the controller? Yeah. yeah, so that brings the arm up to this position uh, up here, and what it does is it also pops up the hood and tilts down our goal, right? So while we're doing that, all of this is working together with one control function, and it's also working with our anti-jam code. So we tilt the goal down basically to prevent us from uh, jamming and like hitting that goal or swinging our arm up. We move the hood up to prevent us from hitting that. And then this arm just sits here until Tyler swings the arm over a little bit. Yep. And it limits it here so that we can't go out of size. And then that's just how we're scoring on the wall stake basically. So uh, something I asked Matteo when we were talking earlier, uh, initially you were going into this event that wall stakes are going to be much more the kind of the dominant feature. And obviously as you've been playing this, the mobile goals have really been huge. Talking more about how you then approach coming here to the Minnesota SIG event uh, with that new strategy. Yeah, so we came in thinking, wow, wall stakes are going to be the way to play the match. You know, like they're in the middle of the field, both teams can score on them. We need to be able to cycle them quickly, right? So that's why we were able to cycle this four. Um, and but then we learn you know what's better is actually just holding these positive corners that doubles your points versus the wall stakes you know they're only worth the same amount of points as scoring on a regular mogo so what we figured is that as we come here we want to score more in the positive corners and less necessarily on the wall stakes and right and so just to jump in there um we sort of started off thinking that wall stakes would be the end all be all and how the match is played and determined uh and you know so we originally thought that that would be how you win a match versus now we sort of see it as a strategy of how to come back from a match where your opponent ends up getting both positive corners so uh, you know if uh with because of the math that works out behind the game if your opponent gets both positive corners the only way that you can come back is by scoring on the walls by scoring the other three goals and also controlling the wall stakes. So having a, a competent wall stake mech is still very important for the game in a situation where you might be down, like in our first balls match, we scored two on each wall stake, which helped us um, overcome the other alliance. Eventually we were, we were able to remove their goal from the corner, um, you know, just strategy wise. But uh, had we not been able to do that, we still would have been able to um, beat them just because of uh, being able to reliably, reliably score on the wall stakes. Tyler, I want to ask you, uh, when you were looking at approaching this game, your robot overall, I mean, it, it is probably one of the more mechanically and pneumatically complex robots I've seen, I, I think, so far on here. So when you were looking at analyzing the game, what were maybe some other options you were considering coming here for the Minnesota SIG? So I think um, it's funny because originally I think our minds sort of just instantly jumped to something like Backpack where we can use, um, we took a lot of inspiration from In the Zone. Um, which was the game with all the, the yellow cones that you know you sort of scored on. But so what was interesting about in the zone is a lot of teams scored on their mobile goal and then they took from their mobile goal to score 
um, on like field components. And so that's where our mind jumped to uh, originally because that was the meta back in the, in the day. So we originally sort of, you know, our original thought was uh, score them temporarily on our mobile goal and then be able to transfer them to wall stake. But in terms of how we did that, it had to be completely different from in the zone, at least to be efficient. So we also realized that, you know, likely um, for scoring on the mobile goals, we would want a uh, some sort of, you know, intake that runs uh, through the middle of the bot, uh, sort of like the uh, ring intakes from Tipping Point. Uh, and so we kind of just tried to find a way to make a, a hybrid between the in the zone style, transferring your points from one uh, from a mobile goal to a fixed goal, and also the tipping point style through the middle intake, or even uh, spin up style with the rings. And so that's sort of how we set it on backpack. In terms of how we fit it all in size, that's, that's a different story. I mean, when we were building the bot, yeah, I think this is most of what makes it so complex is even mechanically it looks very complex, but the hardest part of it was really just making sure with the weird sizing rules this year and, you know, starting in 18, but only allowed, only being allowed to expand six inches in a single direction throughout the entire match, just making everything function together and not expand out in any illegal way was really the hardest point, uh, part of building this bot. And so we spent a lot of the time on the field, making sure that nothing would be out. Uh, a lot of time in CAD, just checking like checking and double checking that our geometry that we believed would work would actually you know work and not, we wouldn't get to the end of the build and design process and have a, an illegal robot. And so I think that's really, that's the most impressive part of the bot. I think I'll let Heitner talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously, so fitting in size, that uh, led to these uh, little pistons that we have on the claw. Uh, basically what happens is if Tyler presses a shift key, uh, it just folds it in, right? So the arm is limited at this point to go under, and then if Tyler presses a shift key, it just automatically folds in. Um, and then if he starts, you know, bringing that arm back, basically what happens is as soon as he gets to the point where it's in size, it just flips back out. Uh, so this was all just automated code. Uh, like we talked about earlier with our macros, uh, we got a little bit of help from some kids at UCF. Uh, Capri O'Brien helped us a lot. Uh, shout out to him and shout out to Davis from 229. They helped us a lot with this and running tasks. Um, and then part of that too that he mentioned was this backpack was hard for multiple reasons. Like a lot of teams had this idea, but it was hard just because pulling up on these caps is close to impossible. And then also you had to have a locking claw here, basically because when you're putting so much force on that mobile goal, it's so hard to be able to pull off and not lose the mobile goal. And losing that is such a disadvantage basically. Last thing, Mateo, I just want to ask you as we sort of wrap up on this is looking from an autonomous standpoint, uh, how do you think your auto is going to start to evolve uh, over your next course of a couple of events? You've been able to get a couple of matches now here. Where do you see maybe that going like your next event? Yeah, so today we've just been running solo win point. I mean, that's the most important thing for qualifications. But then for our ELMs, we have some cool autos that score on the wall stake. And we noticed that basically because when we were coming here, we're like, man, scoring on the wall stake is hard in match. But if you can do it in auto, you get such an advantage. And that's just where I think it's going to move more to is scoring on those wall stakes and doing stuff that you can't do in match in auto. What do you think maybe that compares to other teams to talk to? Their first thing is typically seeing that the middle goal is going to be a really common thing. You might be the first thing I've talked to who said that the wall stakes might be on that. Like, how do you how do you maybe determine what's going to be more important? Yeah, so the mobile goal to me is something that you can grab at any point in the match, right? Uh, it's really easy to grab, it's easy to score on, but the wall stakes are just impossible to score on. You can also try and fight for that MoGo from another team. The wall stakes, you just can't do that. If someone's hitting you, there's no way to score on that. And we saw that in matches today and in scrims yesterday. So that's why I just think personally that the, and I think Tyler agrees that the wall stakes are important in auto. Awesome, well 360X, congratulations on an awesome design so far. Really like everything that's gone into that. Obviously so far as we're filming this in day one, having a great performance. So we can't wait to see how you do. So good luck here at the Minnesota SIG event. Can't we see how you do the rest of the season. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.